Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday edition here in the program. It's a delight to be with you. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus in chapter 20. Leviticus 20. Right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, and you're really going to need a piece of paper and something to write with today. Today is packed packed with information that, frankly, is on the front burner of the news broadcast of our day. I'll explain more about that here in just a second. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is a short written presentation of the of God's plan of salvation. The word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and it's a tremendous gospel tool that really enables us to expand our witnessing opportunities and see more people come to Christ. I want to encourage you to get some tracts from us, but I want to lead into the broadcast time this way. One of the often heard criticisms of the Bible these days goes something like this. If God is such a loving God, then why did he call for the capital punishment to be passed out on things like cursing your parents, homosexuality, and doing work on the Sabbath day? Well, sometimes people put the criticism this way. Why does the God of the New Testament seem so different from the God of the Old Testament? Well, friend, these are questions that well, are being asked by a lot of folk, especially teenagers and college agers. And these questions must, must be answered. And we dare not just blow them off. They deserve good quality answers. I say all this because here we are, Leviticus 20, and here we find the punishments listed for many of the rules God had already given. In Leviticus 20, we're going to see that God called for the death penalty for such sins as human sacrifice, homosexuality, and other perverted uses of intimacy, and also witchcraft. Now, what in the world are New Testament believers supposed to glean from a chapter like this? Well, get your paper out, get a pencil out, and hold on to your hat, because here we go. Well, I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. I really want to put into your hand a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. Would you let me do that? Now, one of the tracts that's in there, and there's about 41, 42 different tracts in there, but one of the tracts is this one, Will You Live Forever? Now, let me ask you, if somebody came up to you and asked, Will people live forever? What would you say? Well, the answer is yes, but where? Where will they live? That makes all the difference. Will it be in heaven with God or in the lake of fire away from God? This gospel tract lays out with simplicity and clarity the basic ideas taught in the Bible about, number one, that the dead, all the dead are going to rise and face God. Number two, they're going to be judged by Jesus Christ. But number three, because Jesus died and rose again, there's hope for us when we face him, if we receive Christ as Savior, and he is the way out. It is laid out so clearly, so simply in this gospel tract. Will you live forever? Would you please let me send you this track as part of that sample packet? At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Do it today, 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 please. Now, if you can't wait to the end of the program, you can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. The word tracks is T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. We would love to be a partner with you in the work of the gospel. Please do that today. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 20, let me highlight some verses. First of all, verse 2 says this, 
Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers, foreigners that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed, his children unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. That's capital punishment. Verses 7 and 8 says this, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctifieth you. Go to verses 22 and 23. Verse 22 says, Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. There's a lot more in this chapter, but I need to stop right there, please. Now, let me begin by having you notice a phrase that shows up six times in this chapter. It wasn't in any of the verses that I read, but six times we find these words, their blood shall be upon them. Their blood shall be upon them. It's found in verse 9, 11, 12, 13, 16, and verse 27. It's a key phrase here. Whatever the sin issues that are mentioned here, God says that the doers, the doers of these sins are guilty of them, not God. The sinner is condemned personally for their personal actions. Now, that's a clear point made in this chapter. Chapter 20 is going to restate a number of the rules that were already given in chapters 18 and 19. So the question begs being asked, why the repetition? Well, I think it's this. In chapters 18 and 19, the focus in those two chapters was on the person, or I could call him the perpetrators of the sin. Who did the sin? The focus is on the sinner, the perpetrator of the sin. But now, in chapter 20, the focus is on the punishment for those sins. One section gives us the crimes, the other section gives us the punishment. The punishment, by the way, was never done in Israel by mob rule. It was never done by vigilante justice. It was done only after facts and people gave honest witness before judges. That needs to be said, all right? Sometimes people get confused there. Leviticus chapter 20 has three parts to it. Each part has two key words. One is a word beginning with the letter S, one with a word beginning with the letter W. Are you ready? Jot it down. The first section is verses one through nine. I've titled that spiritual wickedness is punished. Spiritual wickedness is punished. Here we're going to find things like sacrificing your children, witchcraft, and dishonoring your parents. That all brought the death penalty. Part number two is verses 10 to 21. 10 to 21. My title here is sexual wickedness is punished. Sexual wickedness. And here, all manner of wrongful uses of physical intimacy are listed and most require the death penalty. Then part number three is verses 22 to 27. My title here is Serious Warnings Are Given. Serious Warnings. Now, in the short time frame of this broadcast, I I cannot in any way give a full explanation of why God called for the death penalty in so many of these sin cases, but I can give you these helps. Jot them down. You need them. Number one is this. These rules found here in chapter 20, these rules were given to a specific nation at a specific time in their history. These rules do not apply today. Let me use an illustration. There was a time in my life when I was growing up that my parents gave me a curfew. I had to be home by a set time at night. That was the time I was in then. But now I'm 65 years of age. Now I'm 65 years old, and that curfew no longer applies because I'm in a different era. Well, so too is the children and the nation of Israel and the world now. 
But the question needs to be asked, and what happened to change the era? That's a good question. That leads me to statement number two. When Jesus came, he changed the era. When Jesus came, he changed things. If you're again taking notes, jot down these facts about what Jesus did. Number one, Jesus regularly stated the Old Testament laws and said that they were right, and he built on them. For example, if you go to the Sermon on the Mount, where there Jesus said that not only is the action of adultery sin, but now lusting after a woman in your heart is equally sinful now. Which standard do you want, the Old Testament or Jesus' standard? The second thing Jesus did was this. He came to do two things about the law. He came to fulfill it, Matthew 5 says, and he came to end it, put it aside. That's what Romans 10 verse 4 says. You see, the law, the Old Testament law, was for this purpose. It was our schoolmaster to bring us to Jesus Christ. And once we receive Christ, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit helps us obey a new law, the law of love. Now, that law of love makes us love God with all of our being and love our neighbor as ourself, which, by the way, that loving your neighbor as yourself was stated bluntly at the end of Leviticus 19. It's not new. It's always been part of God's moral compass. The third thing we need to note is this. In the New Testament, sexual sins were judged not by stoning, but by excommunication, because we're in a new era. Just go and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, All that being said, I'm not going to just skirt the whole firestorm issue of homosexuality. Is it still sin in God's eyes today? The answer is yes. And let me give you three quick things here. First of all, number one, God's morality is based upon his character. He is eternal. He's eternally unchangeable, so his moral standards cannot change. His methods of punishment can change, but his moral standards cannot. Number two, We're told in Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, that our own human nature and our conscience tells us that homosexuality is wrong. God is not alone in passing judgment on this kind of a sin. The third thing is this. This sin of homosexuality is listed along with other sins in the New Testament, places like Ephesians 5, beginning at verse 1. Then you you just got to read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 sometime. There we're told such a powerful thing. It says there that the local church, in the local church, there were believers who were once practicing all kinds of sexual sins, but they had heard the gospel of grace and they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and they were saved from their sin, sin's condemnation and sin's control. They were now walking in a new pattern of life. You may ask, Brother Mark, have you ever led a homosexual to Christ? Yes. Yes, I did. And one of them I sent off to Bible school, and he's preaching the gospel today to the glory of God. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.